so there are generally speaking two aspects to disidentifying from thought and it is important to see thoughts as thoughts at some point uh, in this process it's critical to really grok that uh, a thought is not creating reality a thought is not defining anything a thought is simply a reflection it's a reflection in the mind a reflection of the past a reflection of previous thoughts and perceptions and so forth thoughts about other people thoughts about yourself these are very common thoughts uh, and at some point again it's important to recognize that they're mere thoughts they're a passing phenomenon they come and go and you can question any thought and you don't need any specific thought to function to quote unquote choose it happens pre-verbally for sure uh, it can be a difficult thing to actually see that and you don't have to believe me or understand that uh, but i just want to point out that it, it, a critical aspect of disidentifying from thoughts is to realize that thoughts are like projectors right they project onto a screen they're not real in the way that this is real right they're not real in the way that your sensation of your breath right now your awareness of the breath is real um that's part of disidentifying now what sometimes happens is people kind of get themselves into a watcher state with that meaning they, they they're like noticing thoughts but they're not making the critical uh, uh insight or not gaining the critical insight that the one aware of thoughts is itself a thought right and this is usually pretty clear with awakening um so i don't want to get lost in um terminology or, or uh conceptual approaches to this rather i want to point to what i'm talking about and i've pointed to this many times before but it's a very valuable type of let's call it inquiry or practice um it's not inquiry in the usual sense of asking a question and then sort of letting go and letting the answer arise or arrive however and whenever it will um, but it is um, a sort of investigation into the nature of thought itself investigation into the nature of consciousness so when i talk about thoughts i'm talking about consciousness thoughts arise in and as consciousness uh, and again we have the ability through an internal process through the use of that that conscious apparatus to perceive ourselves as backing away from thought noticing a thought as an object and then another thought as an object and another thought often people will also say they, they don't catch them right away they kind of catch them when the thought's already there for instance or you know it's almost retrospective and that's totally fine but again if you do this um really frequently or really consistently this kind of practice of noticing thoughts as such as objects you can and often do solidify the sense of the subject right uh so there's still in that case there's still a dualistic construct arising within consciousness it's just clear that the thoughts themselves are like you know pictures on a screen right they come and go they change they're not actually defining your experience at all they're reflecting your experience that's an important insight the next insight though is to collapse that subject object experience within consciousness and this is what i mean in my book when i talk about moving toward thought um so let's explore what it feels like to move toward thought because this is not a conceptual uh, offering. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. And I'm definitely not trying to give you a map or a model to understand consciousness. If that's how you're receiving this, that's just not the intention of it. So uh, whatever. But if you, if you are interested in the actual direct experience, then that's what we're looking at here. So don't try to take rigid notes mentally or otherwise on what I'm saying and what terminology I'm using. Rather, go for the ride, right? Go for the journey with me and find what I'm pointing you to. Uh, at the very least, explore how I'm pointing, and then you can on your own do the same thing or watch this video again and dial yourself back in. So uh, the, the simplest way to start really is just notice any thought. So just, you know, if you want to take a couple deep breaths, you want to put your attention in your body for a moment to just kind of center yourself in presence, whatever, it's totally fine. Also, this may actually be more valuable and effective after meditation. So if you meditate for, say, an hour, or maybe you don't meditate an hour, maybe you meditate 20 or 30 minutes, whatever. But if you meditate for a period of time, your mind will calm down, regardless of what it seems like is happening. The mind and body will calm. And from that calm place, it is a little easier to do this kind of work. But you don't have to. 
So, uh, so yeah, what we're going to start by doing is just noticing any thought. And any thought means any thought. So it could be a visual image, could be some doubt arising about what I'm talking about. Like, oh, I already know how to do this. It could be self-talk, like I never understand this stuff and, or, or a question in your mind, like, oh, well, what do I do if this happens? What do I do if I feel a sensation? What do I do? You know, like almost trying to analyze what I'm saying rather than just do it, right? So any of those thoughts that I just named can arise and those are thoughts, right? Just as much as any other thought is a thought. So a self-talk thought, a, a thought that feels like you doing the thinking is just another thought as well. There's no, they're not more, re, more or less real, not better or worse. So just notice any thought that's arising in your experience right now. Notice as you do this, just what it feels like to do this. Does it have some curiosity to it? Does it feel like some sort of contact with consciousness? Does it feel frustrating? Is there thoughts that say it feels frustrating or I don't know what to do? Is there doubt, right? Any of these things are fine. But notice, doubt is always structured as a thought. Maybe there's a, a label that says I'm confused, like, like we're kind of labeling experience. I'm, I'm confused or I'm disoriented or I don't know what is happening or I don't understand this. That is the thought. If that, if that occurs, that's the thought. It's okay. It's perfectly okay. So just notice the thought. And then notice where the thought is naturally without you doing anything to it. Don't push the thought away. Don't continue to think about the thought. And don't imagine yourself as a watcher of thought. Don't imagine a space in which these thoughts are forming, right? Because those are all added um, experiences, which are also forms of thought. Rather than any of those, rather than buying into any of those experiences um, or those, um, I'll just say experiences for now. Rather than buying into any of those, just notice what they're made out of. Notice the texture of knowing. What allows you to know those thoughts in the most basic way? What allows you to know they're even there, right? That's where I'm pointing you. Just look there or move there or stop there. You may not have to move toward anything. A lot of this is really kind of a stopping. Stop the mind the moment you notice a thought. Stop means don't grab another thought. Don't move to the next thought. Whatever the thought texture is, it's perfectly okay. Don't take notes on it. If note taking is happening, that's another thought and that's okay. So if that, if that thought occurs, that's your entry point directly in. What is it allows you, what is it that allows you right now to notice the knowing? What is it, what is it that allows you to notice the consciousness? Is it other than the consciousness that allows you to notice the consciousness right now? The mere fact or the mere appearance of you being conscious without thinking about that is already there. You can have a thought that says, I am conscious or I know what consciousness is, sure. But is it not there before the thought even arises? Of course it is. That consciousness, that conscious knowingness, that's what we're pointing to. And it may feel all-inclusive. It may feel expansive. It may feel neutral. But again, any of these labels are simply one more thought, which you can move toward. Now, the mind may get very quiet, and there, it may be so quiet there's not even a thought arising saying it's quiet. That's perfectly okay. Now, what often comes is anticipation thoughts at this point. A thought that's like, oh, I get it. I feel something. Is this, is this awakening? Am I going to be awakened? Right? Again, 
Don't get enticed by those thoughts such that you get re-identified with thoughts. Just notice that's just the next thought. That's just the mind stirring. Don't stir it up. Don't add your own stirring to the mind. Just notice it's stirring. <laughs> notice these thoughts forming. And notice you don't have to pay attention to the thought in such a way that you are analyzing the thought. You don't have to fully define or clarify the thought even. Just let it move the way it moves naturally. Let this conscious experience move the way it moves naturally. And when you get that, when you get what I'm pointing to, you can just stop there, you can pause the video and just sit with it. Lead yourself back to it any time. It may feel very quiet, but it may have a little bit of a dynamic aspect in, in that there's a movement in consciousness, a kind of swirling or ripples that could form into thoughts, but they don't have to. But the only way you're going to really know that directly is this, this way. You have to abide as the consciousness and as the thought as the consciousness. Thought, consciousness, self in this way are all seamless. Subject and object, meaning the subject, the sense of you, the conscious one, and object, meaning any thought that could arise, any thought, every thought that's ever arisen, see that those are not two. A thought doesn't arise from and out of consciousness and become something of its own, um, that has its own volition or its own separate reality. That's not what happens. It's just this ocean of consciousness and there are swirls and eddies in the ocean of consciousness. That's all that's happening. Well, you never stop being the consciousness. Any way you can know being and know yourself is consciousness. That's it. That's it. So it's right where you are. It's exactly where you are. It's the totality of all thoughts, the totality of all perceptions, the totality of all experiences. And it's undifferentiated. It doesn't have to differentiate into any specific experience to be known directly. To know consciousness directly in this way is um, a very important insight. It's very simple too. It's so simple that we overlook it all the time. That's why there's these paradoxical statements like take the backward step. It is kind of a backward step into the pure subjectivity. And when we know pure subjectivity, we know purity. And when we know purity of consciousness, we know there are no objects of consciousness. Neither is there a subject or object. They arise together. The illusion of one arises with the illusion of the other. So there's just this ocean of consciousness, this ocean of being or knowingness or awakeness. It's not special. Nothing you need to say about it or conclude about it. Even the idea of cultivating it is kind of absurd. It's just here. So it's a very much a non-practice practice. You can intentionally, intentionally rest here. So in that sense, it's a practice in that if you just stay, stay in your usual habits of, and momentums of mind and body, you can overlook this like all day long. So if you make the intention to do this, what we're talking about, reclaim it, let's say, then that is the practice. But but to, to remain in it, it's kind of like a non-practice. It's kind of an unpractice because you're not trying to make anything happen. You're not trying to go anywhere. You're not trying to understand anything. You're not judging anything. You're just resting in the pure awakeness that is literally always here when you're physically awake. Give yourself the gift of doing this. Practice it. It will stabilize a lot. And you realize you don't need to chatter, chatter, chatter in your own mind to yourself. It just makes us nervous, anxious, doubtful, confused. Confusion requires thought. This doesn't require thought. But it accommodates thought because it encompasses all thought and all thought forms. 
Let me know how that went for you. Whether you like it, I can do more.